by Commissioner Murphy. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, come before you with bowed heads and an arm of heart, thanking you for this day, thanking you for waking us up in our right minds, Heavenly Father, to serve you and you alone. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this community that you've given us. We thank you for our dedicated staff and employees, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the dedicated law enforcement and firemen that watch over our community. And Heavenly Father, for those men that stand opposed for us far and near to keep us protected. We ask now, Heavenly Father, that you, you bless us in this meeting, guide our thoughts, guide our decisions. That is all of you and none of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, next is a public comment period, and tonight we have one uh, speaker. Uh, Ms. Burns, if you'd like to come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. And you have five minutes, um, but we can be slightly lenient if you need it. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Gloria Burns, and I live at 167 Burns Landing, and that's on the island. Okay, um, I'll start. Um, good evening. My remarks tonight focus on the land trust request to conduct master trails planning for the island and the mainland. However, this item is also closely related to two others on your agenda tonight, the South Harrington speeding problems and the after-hours enforcement issues related to Frederica Park. First, I want to point out that land conservation and multipurpose trails are positive goals shared by communities across the nation. However, how that planning is carried out and implemented can make all the difference in successfully reaching those goals. There are two basic concerns with the approach that you are considering tonight. The first is a concern with the county seeding policy development to non-governmental groups and interests. While these groups, such as the land trust, are typically at the planning table in these initiatives, in this case a group is funding and managing both the, both the process and the product that will eventually, can eventually, become county policy. Public-private partnerships can be a positive means to, to leverage limited local government resources to achieve more. However, the potential of these partnerships can only be realized when their initiatives are open, transparent, and truly participatory. As you have recently read, there is something that the re this is something that the residents of the island's German village neighborhood are now painfully aware. Our current dilemma is the result of the land trust handling of the Musgrove Park deal that will divert public vehicle and boat trailer access to their new waterfront park and boat ramp through our small residential street. These plans were made in closed door negotiations with the seller and DNR without our knowledge or involvement. Despite purchasing more than a mile of frontage on Lawrence Road, this group made the decision to shift the negative impact to neighboring residents and ultimately to Glenn County taxpayers to address the road and enforcement issues this will create. So you can understand why German Village residents are wary of more island and county planning being placed in the hands of the land trust now. While the word stakeholders is often tossed around in the planning process, it does not always mean that the general public is and has been involved. Stakeholders should not be limited to those with the money and the resources to make the plan happen. In our case, we were told that the private planning for the new public park was a done deal, that the three parties involved had decided what was best for us and ultimately for Glen County taxpayers. The island is not a theme park on a wall map. Stakeholders are found in those tiny little squares on a map that represent our properties and our homes. While it may just look like a tiny square and on a grand plan, it's everything to that Glen County family who may find an eight-foot concrete trail through their front yard or traffic to a new public park running through their formerly quiet residential dead-end street. In many ways, these citizens are the biggest stakeholders of all. The second concern is the long-term county cost of maintenance, enforcement, and duplication of effort. While trails can be a positive and valuable community amenity, they are infrastructure and bring long-term costs through maintenance, easement acquisition, and signage. They can also introduce unintended impacts with increased public traffic and access to established areas, as we're seeing on other agenda items tonight. It's also unclear why the county needs yet another master trails plan for the island and mainland when the county planning department just completed a $33,000 master bike and multipurpose um, trail plan less than 12 months ago. This is a BATS committee plan that includes the entire county. 
It includes the Sea Island Road Trail over Dunbar Creek as well as a Harrington bike loop. In fact, South Harrington residents are here tonight seeking speed humps to solve a speeding problem in their neighborhood. They also have a boat ramp and a new public park on their street, similar to what the Land Trust has planned for our neighborhood. I'm not sure if they were involved in the planning, but they also have a Land Trust bikeway plan through their front yards. While the county refers to it, as a, to it as a sidewalk under splice, the Land Trust refers to it as the Harrington Loop Trail. You are also considering a new ordinance to increase enforcement for unauthorized use and overnight parking at Frederica Park, also on Lawrence Road. These examples illustrate the consequences of uncoordinated planning on all of us. Once lines are drawn on a map, and that map is in a plan adopted by the Commission and incorporated into county planning efforts, then it effectively becomes county policy. It becomes our vision for future development and our future capital projects list, whether we were involved or not. Externally funded and controlled planning initiatives by a private entity, unaccountable to taxpayers, such as that proposed by the Land Trust, should be approved by the Commission only on the condition that the planning process is open, transparent, and participatory, and that the principles of public safety, compatible use, and private property rights are respected. A truly successful planning process never begins with the words, done deal. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burns. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to defer items 4 on the agenda and item 6 on the agenda, item 16 on the agenda, until a later date, uh, uncertain. Second. Mr. I think that's the May 4th meeting. It's May 4th meeting. You want to amend, oh, you that, want to, amend that motion? You want, to, you want to bring it back to May 4th? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'd like to revise my uh, motion to um, defer the items 4 and 16 to the May 4th meeting. Okay. The motion is to defer the item 4 and 16 to the May 4th meeting. Second. I have a second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor of deferring those two items signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. It is unanimous. I'm going to be right out of order here. I'm Julian Smith. I'm objecting to your scheduling a public hearing on abandonment of county roads. Mr. Smith, you're, you're out of order. I admit I'm out of order. This is... Mr. Smith. This happens too frequently please. that you schedule public hearings and you don't hold... Yes, Kevin, I'm let's go. I'm out of here. Thank you, Mr. Smith. All right, public hearing item. Public hearings will be limited to 30 minutes for each opposing side with five minutes allocated to each individual speaker. Comments are to be limited to relevant information regarding your position and should avoid being repetitious. If a group has a spokesperson, please allow that individual to present your group's position in the time allocated. Your cooperation in this process will be greatly appreciated. Number one, consider the issuance of an alcohol beverage license to Brenda Kofer for 19th Hole Package Store, 3600 Frederica Road, <clears throat> number 17, St. Simons Island, Georgia. The license is to sell distilled spirits, malt beverages, and wine not for consumption on premises of a package store. Sunday sales committed, permitted. Uh, Chief Dorn. If it pleases the Commission, Mr. Chair, Ms. Kofer is in the audience as required. She meets the requirements for considerations for her issues of license. Thank you. This is a public hearing item. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application may do so now. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application may do so. <clears throat> Seeing none, hearing none, commissioners. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the application signify by raising your right hand. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Culver. <clears throat> Number two, consider the issuance of an alcohol beverage license to Andre Blake for Baja Joe's, 1600 Frederica Road, Number 8, St. Simons Island, Georgia. The license is to sell malt beverages <clears throat> and wine for consumption on premises of a restaurant. Sunday sales permitted. Chief Dorian. Commissioner, Mr. Blake is pleasant. As he stand up, as indicated, he too meets requirements for your consideration for issuance of the license. <clears throat> this is a public hearing item. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application may do so now. <clears throat> Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application may do so now. Seeing none, hearing none. Commissioners? Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion and a second in discussion. All those in favor of approval of the application signify by raising your right hand. 
That is unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> Number three, the issuance of an alcohol, alcoholic beverage license to Hashemel Parik for J. Uh, Shubham, Incorporated, 1245 Kate Road, Brunswick, Georgia. The license is to sell malt beverages and wine not for consumption on premises of a convenience store. Sunday sales permitted. Chief Dorn. Commissioner, Mr. Park is present in the back, standing up. He, too, meets requirements for consideration for issues here license. Chief. Sir. Explain to me what's going on with this license. In because, I mean, th this is not a new license, is it? This... It is a new license? It is a new license. Because they've been selling... Oh, 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 oh. They've been selling alcohol out of that establishment for as long as I can remember. It's a new... He's a new owner. Transfer? Yes. So it's a transfer of a license yes, is what it is. Okay. Because that's why... It usually says if, if it's something like that, it's a transfer. So I was a little bit confused as to what was going on here because I know they'd been selling alcohol. Yes, sir. He's a new owner of the business. He bought the business, I believe, from his nephew, I believe. He's buying the business from his nephew, so that's why it's a new alcohol license. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> okay. I wasn't going to call you out of order. The, uh, <coughs> anyone, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the transfer of this license may do so now. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the transfer of this license may do so now. Seeing none, hearing none, commissioners. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second in discussion. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. <clears throat> it is unanimous. Thank you. Good luck to you. All right, item four has been deferred. Um, the next public hearing item is item number five. Consider increasing the security deposit on a, on a facility on facility rentals at which alcohol is allowed to be served to five hundred dollars per rental. <clears throat> Ms. Powell. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, this was presented to the Finance Committee uh, and it was approved. And the uh, the thought behind this is to raise the the uh, the rate to five hundred dollars security deposit. Uh, to ensure that the facilities will be cleaned after the use by the renting parties. Uh, we have found that uh, the, the current deposit that we have is not sufficient as far as ensuring that, that, uh, that the, the, the renters will take care of the property. And our employees are having to go in after the parties and, and spend an extra amount of time cleaning up and, and trying to make the property presentable for the next renter. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Yes. Uh, any questions for staff? At this time, <clears throat> all right. Any this is a public hearing item. Anyone wanting to speak in favor of uh, of this um, increasing the uh, deposit on facilities uh, may do so at this time. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition may do so. All right. Seeing none, hearing none. Commissioners, motion motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of increasing the fee to $500 signify by raising your right hand. <clears throat> that is unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve all items on consent agenda general business with the exception of any item any commissioner so wishes to pull. I have a motion. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to pull items 12 and 13 off the agenda. Mr. All right. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to pull item 10. Okay. okay. All right, 10, 12, and 13. Any others? Did you say, uh, did you say 11? No. 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 Mm -hmm. uh -uh. 10, 12, and 13. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, item number 10. Appro I don't think, I don't think oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, we've got a motion uh, with exception of those three items. Is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor of the uh, consent agenda items with exception of 10, 12, and 13 signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> those are approved. Number 10, approve the nomination of Joanne. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Alan, <laughs> I practiced the other name. <laughs> I didn't know this one was coming. Matukakakis. And... Um, 
Barrett Walker for consideration of the appointment to serve on the Glen Brunswick Memorial Hospital Authority. The hospital authority will make the final appointment. The terms to begin immediately upon appointment that ends March 1st, 2021. <laughs> Commissioner Booker. Um, I know we've um, kind of gone back and forth about this process, um, but it seems like we really are, are not making this appointment. This, uh, so it seems like if either we should give it up, let them go through whatever their process is and choose somebody, um, or then we actually make an appointment going forward. And I don't know, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure, I know we talked about this the agreement with them when they were talking about this, the new structure over there. Um, but th this seems like we're we're really just wasting time if they can make the appointment. <laughs> I mean, I know we have we narrow it down, but either we should go ahead and give that to them, I think, or we actually make an appointment. I mean, I'm not suggesting we make all the appointments, but it should be a real appointment. I, I just don't feel like this is real. Mr. I kind of agree with um, the commissioner, but my understanding is since we have that special interest with the hospital, we just have to kind of rubber stamp it similar, similar, not exactly, but similar to uh, we have to rubber stamp. Well, we don't have to. You, we can vote against it, but in the end of the day, they can still make these appointments. If that's what they're determined to do, is that correct? That's correct. And typically, if, if, the, if we the, vote them down, we can still uh, they, they can still make the appointment. Correct. And and, and each each um, one of these entities has its unique uh, enabling legislation or laws that that create the uh, these boards, whether it's development authority or the hospital authority. Uh, and this one requires the submission of three names, and they get to pick one of those three names. And if they don't like that, they can they can certainly send it back. Uh, to the county, um, whereas the development authority is, is they submit a name to you, and then um, and you, you uh, can approve or not approve that name. Uh, so we only had two applications. That's what I, that's what I understand. That was all the, okay. <clears throat> so in the hospital, we'll choose one of these if we proceed like we have been in the past. <clears throat> Correct. Well, do we have any oversight with the hospital? Uh, there, there is. I mean, I think this is as part of that oversight. Um, then we also have the agreement that uh, with the land transaction that y'all amended about a year ago, um, where y'all acquiesced to their new structuring, restructuring plan. Um, but as far as any direct oversight, I, I don't think you have the direct oversight in how they operate. Um, you just have some oversight in these appointments. Well, and part of this, um, for me, um, you know, I'm getting concerns from folk who um, use the hospital. I mean, they're, I'm sure they, they, they do a great job out there. They do. I mean, I've been out there myself. But um, that emergency room, um, they've changed some things in there. And I um, just had um, someone that had a horrible experience in there, uh, to actually two families. And... It, it just doesn't make any sense. And my thing is, I mean, either we're going to have, with this part of our oversight process, real input or we're not. So we should give it to them or um, then we should have a real appointment if we're not. If I, if I could speak to that briefly. Uh, I, I understand what you're, what you're thinking, uh, Commissioner. I, and. Um, I think one of the issues here in in, in our uh, area w with our hospital authority is we have a very uh, large indigent and uninsured population that uses that as their primary care site. And I've heard the same complaints from people in my district. Um, I think there are things a hospital can definitely do better, but never haven't been asked, you know, uh, to, to, to make a comment. Uh, that, that's not I, true. I've asked them. No, no. I'm saying <laughs> I have been asked to okay. use my insight and, and my experience <laughs> in seeing this problem not solved, but at least addressed in a positive way in the past. You know, I think there are things that c can be done about the emergency room, gotcha. no question. Uh, I haven't been on there 
orthopedic floor uh, recently more times than I'd wish, uh, it's, it's fabulous. So uh, there are things they can do to, exp to, to improve the experience, and, and if asked, I, I would be glad to, to, to discuss. But that being said, I, I've reviewed uh, the resumes on both these people, and I think they both are uh, exceedingly well qualified. Right. I, I don't have a problem with that, but I just feel like um, this process for us, um, I just don't care for rubber stamping this. It, it just doesn't seem like we have real input. And I'm glad if you we, brought it up because I, I agree with you. Either and we should have it or we should just give it to them. And I think a lot of the things that we do seem, seem to almost become rubber stamp uh, in, in, in many other instances. So I'm, I'm happy you brought this up, and I agree with, with the sentiment that you're expressing. So how do we address it if we want to address it? Uh, Commissioners, I think that would require a change to the legislation that uh, created these appointments and the process that created that. Uh, so it could be done. It's just a matter of, of going to a, you know, in this case, I believe it's the state that created this legislation and not just the, the, the local legislation, not just general state law. But if that's a change, it would take some, uh, you know, working with the General Assembly to do that. Couldn't happen until next year. Correct. Well, as, as that may be, Commissioner Strickland, I, I agree with Commissioner Booker and, and Commissioner Murphy. This was basically a ceremony. We rubber stamp who they give us or they just put them in anyway. Um, EDA spends $850,000 of taxpayers' money every year, and we basically have no oversight. They can do whatever they want. They bring a person in. That's who they nominate. We either say yes or no, period, end of story, and then they move on. We have no, no oversight over the hospital, but I do believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. County Attorney, the county's on the hook for the money. This authority may be autonomous, but the county is still on the hook, like we are with EDA. Is that not correct? From sorry for the for the hospital's debts. Yes, I'd have sir. to look into it a little further to confirm that, but I, I have no I'd like to, to not. Uh, I, I'd like to know is what I'm saying because if it, yes, Commissioner sir. Book is correct, if this is nothing more than us rubber stamping them, then maybe we need to go back to our local delegation and say, hey, we, we, we'd like a little more say. If, if there's four slots or three slots and there's seven applicants, we'd like to see all seven and vote on them versus, well, there's one one person, seven applicants, we get to vote on the one that's that's handed to us. I, I just, I, that's my concern. Is I, agree, I agree with Commissioner Booker. It's, it's well, what are we doing this for? If they could just put on who they want to anyway. And I'm not saying the people that are here are not qualified. qualified. They look very good to me. But that's, I don't think that's where Alan's going with this. He's, he's basically saying, why are we doing it if we have no real authority to do it? We're not really doing anything. And I definitely need to know, I'm sure we all need to know about the debt. If we're responsible for that debt, we, we definitely need to seek to change this. Would you like to have a presentation from the hospital authority is, uh, and let Aaron research what the um, what our liability what, what the county's liability is as it relates to the hospital and um, and the ramifications of changing the way the uh, appointments are made well I go ahead Th thank you Commissioner Booker I, I think that would be uh, very beneficial and I wouldn't necessarily uh, just just uh, restrict it to that I think you know, they could give us a presentation and, and leave some time for us to express, express the concerns that our constituents have had with their hospital experience. You know, not just the way uh, their, their board is composed, but really what's the experience like? And, uh, and the question that Commissioner Stanball raised is, 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 is concerning. I don't, I don't know if we, if we are responsible for their debts, but if we are, we ought to have a greater input into their operations. But just to get, just to start the dialogue during a work session, I think would be beneficial. Yeah. I would support and, that. And, and, and I certainly support what Commissioner Booker, but in the hospital's ER's defense, my wife and I have had occasion to be out there within the last month or so, each one of us, and the service was exceptional. We were both in and out of there. We were back in the back room within five or ten minutes of arriving there. And we were both out of there with all the procedures and everything we need to do within a matter of a couple hours. And so I just, I have to give them credit where credit's due. Well, just as a uh, position, I might say uh, you look like a heart attack waiting to happen, so that may 
<laughs> you, you, you may have gone there with a sore throat, but they get, they get a guy like you back out. quickly. I apologize. Well, I, I, I couldn't help myself. Uh, I know you couldn't, and, and I right, probably helped myself. Uh, okay, hey, a, let's, let, get, let's let, get this. Let me give a, a, a bit of a contrary view. My goddaughter um, was out there two weeks ago. They moved her seven times before she was finally put in a unit, and she's back out there now. Um, so, and her, her experience there was awful. Um, and um, I had to just be prayerful before I, I, and I haven't even called some of the folk out there that I know to, to call to talk about it because I just couldn't believe it. I have a, a coworker um, that um, sister had to go through some traumatic stuff, ended up having the, the, the family transferred her to St. Vincent's and one of the doctors out there said to them, yes, they have real doctors down there. As though our, our hospital doesn't have real doctors. So, you know, that's just some of the stuff. And I know there are a lot of good people out there. My, my experiences out there have been pretty good when I've been out there personally. But there, there, there are some issues that need to be addressed. Well, do, do we want... I guess the question is, do we want to defer item 10 or, or move it forward? What's the desire of the commission? I'd like to make a motion to approve um, these two nominations because uh, Joanne, Miss Joe, I don't know her personally, but she's been serving on there, I believe. Um, and I think Barrett Walker has been served. Maybe this is to just renew their appointments. But uh, Joanne has. Huh? Joanne's been on there. I, th I think yeah. one of the, they're going to choose one of these. Right. I mean, we 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 asked for three, didn't get but two, and they're going to oh, choose, okay. they're going to choose okay. one of these. To, okay, they're going to choose. But I, I think I think uh, for, well, for what item they're, ten they're is gonna... about. Let, let me say for what item ten is about. Uh, we're we're not going to change how the nomination process is done, uh, even if we defer it. It's not going to be changed anytime soon. So. Uh, for the sake of dealing with item 10, the face, you know, on the surface of what it's about, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the nominations. And uh, now as far as having a work session and gleaning some more information and seeing what we want to do going forward, uh, you know, as, as respect to what we can learn from any liability issues we have and or changing the nomination process, I'm open to that. But, uh, so I think I heard the words, I make a motion. Make a motion. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I will second. <laughs> okay, we have, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I, uh, my suggestion was going to be to leave it alone, not even defer it, because it doesn't matter. Well, well, the problem with that, though, is it does matter the way it's set up now, so, you know. And, and your issue is is how it's set up. So well, it, it's been right. pulled from the consent agenda. We we we've got to vote on it up or down. Yeah. <clears throat> right. But if we don't vote on it, they still are going to uh, pick one. But they yeah. won't. See, this process requires y'all to submit three names, and, and in this case, it's only two because you only received two applicants. But if you don't submit these names, they can't select an applicant from this list. So they will. This term will expire, and they'll be have an exp expired seat that still needs to be filled. So there is a role here. It's just that you're restricted to. Three names submit to them, they get to pick, pick one of those names. Uh, unlike the Development Authority, uh, where they submit you one name and you can approve or reject that one name. So in this case, it's three names. I, but I understand what you're saying, and certainly we can we can uh, I mean, carry that forward as y'all see fit. Yeah, I, I, I fully concur with the, the sentiments of Commissioner Booker, but I think I think in order to keep the hospital functioning and moving forward, I. I that, that's why I, I said I'll, I'll, I'll about. yield to that. Yeah, um, but, thank you. But, but, I, but, but we but, do need to visit that. But, but Mr. Chairman, let's put, it, let's put it on the work session and, and get these it. and get these questions answered. We, we'll do it. Very good. We'll do it. I, I mean, I, and I think that'd be very. I, I know very little about the operation. You know the, how the authority works. So I, I think that would be a good ex good exercise. All right. Any more discussion? Okay. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve the nomination of uh, these two and. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by raising your right hand. Oh, that unanimous? Okay. Uh, number 12. <clears throat> a 
approved submitting a request to the PATH Foundation for a proposal to prepare a master trail plan study for the mainland to complement a previous study conducted by the PATH Foundation. I'm sorry, I forgot who. J.R., did you pull this? I did. Oh, I'm, Richard did. I'm sorry. I pulled it over in third. Okay. And it's just to, to go back and, and look a little bit further on what Ms. Burns had brought up. I know this was presented at a work session to the Board of Commissioners, and we were pretty much in agreement <laughs> with this. But I also remember, as she pointed out, that some time ago there was a study done by the county, if I'm not mistaken. Was there not, Mr. Yes, there was. And so, and I, I'm sorry that this question was not asked at the work session, but if we, how old is the study that the county conducted? I guess, I guess my question is, and I understand this is just a proposal, but why do we want to go through this exercise of this proposal if we already have a master trail plan that's been done and go through this with potentially spending more money? I guess that's the question that I'm asking. So. Well, my understanding when <clears throat> Mr. Slade made his presentation was that this was um, good, that the study was going to be privately funded uh, with the assistance of the PATH Foundation. And uh, so it's not going to cost the county one red cent, no matter what they come up with? Mr. Slade, I'll give you the opportunity to. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, currently, the. Uh, State Land. your name for the record, please. My name is Ben Slade, and I'm here on behalf of the Coastal Georgia Greenway and the PATH Foundation. Um, the original study for St. Simons was done in 2005. We held public hearings at St. William's Church, the County Casino, the uh, Presbyterian Church out on uh, Lawrence Road. And as a result of that master plan, uh, we have built about 2.3 miles of trails on St. Simons, including the one out to Hampton Point and the one over to the Cloister. Of that amount, about $2.3 million, $250,000 came from the county. The rest of it was done by contributions from the PATH Foundation and from private philanthropy. What I'm suggesting is that we do a plan similar to what was done on St. Simons. Now, currently, the, the Land Trust and the PATH Foundation are in the process of updating that master plan for St. Simons <coughs> only. And there will be a series of, there will be a steering committee as we had in 2005, and there will be public meetings to discuss the, the, the plan. Uh, one of the, the things that PATH can do for the county is give you some specific suggestions as to the construction of the plan out to, to, uh, to what we call the Harrington Loop, you call sidewalks. Uh, PATH has a, has a great deal of experience in locating those and in working with, with local residents and in, in building trails along that. Now, that's, that is underway, and the county's not being asked for any funding. What I'm suggesting, and I have samples here of plans that the PATH Foundation has done for Columbus, for Clayton County, for uh, uh, Decatur, Georgia, and there probably are 15 or 20 more, including ones for Carrollton, Georgia, LaGrange, Gainesville. Uh, you can almost name any progressive Georgia city that has worked with them. We're fortunate in that the PATH Foundation has five of their directors who have homes on St. Simons or Sea Island. They are a nonprofit organization. They don't get any direct funding from county governments or from uh, uh, it, their operations are fully funded by private philanthropy. What I'm suggesting is let's ask them to come in and work with the county planning department, and I've already discussed it with them, discussed it with the commissioner, let work with the county planning department to get specific. Now, frankly, the, there was a study done in 1994. I got a copy of it. Uh, it was, and then there was a study done, I believe, in 2012. Nothing was done because, frankly, they are more theoretical and don't really involve getting people like the PATH Foundation on the ground doing specific planning for the type of construction, working with property owners about easements and all that goes into building trails. So that's why I'm suggesting ask them for a proposal. Now, I've looked at your, your 
strate your strategic plan for the county, and I commend you for saying that you want to work with local um, organizations, and uh, I think the specifics are here. We join with public and private partners across the community in adopting this shared vision for Glenn County. To me, this is an opportunity to work with a private philanthropy, the PATH Foundation, and the Coastal Georgia Greenway. And, and it, frankly, I think PATH, want, when they come to a county, they want the county to have some skin in the game. They will probably come back and ask you for some funding. I'm not asking for a dime of funding tonight. All I'm asking for you is to consider it. They will, they will come to you with a proposal. They will work with your staff on questions that the staff may have about it, and, and that's how the process would work. So, so the, the fact of the matter is it's probably going to wind up costing the county something. I hope it will. <laughs> now, I'm talking if, if about we, yeah. the taxpayers are going to have to foot the bill for this final proposal if the Board of Commissioners were to move forward with it. it yes, that would be at your discretion. Um, if I might, um, if uh, if they will be looking for us to have skin in the game, don't we already have that with this two 2012 plan? Because if you're talking about an update, yeah. they're not starting from scratch. Well, no, they'll use existing plans, but, I, I mean, if you – I'll be glad to show you some of these plans. They are much more specific, and unlike a, an outside consultant who comes in, RS&H, and I think the other one was done by a firm called PBS&J, and I've worked with both of those firms over the years on Glencoe and various things. PATH comes in and works with property owners on the ground. They take photographs of the ground. They, they do the planning. They, they dodge around trees, all that's, that's required to build an attractive, safe, and functional trail. That's something we've never had before. And again, if you look at what's happened in Columbus, currently Carrollton, Georgia is completing a 16-mile trail that goes through West Georgia University. You know, we could have a trail that would go from the college to downtown Brunswick, and by the way, they'll be working with the city of Brunswick as well as Glenn County, and we would hope that the county, the city rather, would contribute some funding to this study. But I think it'll be a lot more than you've ever had before, and the fact is what you've had before has never been acted on. But, but my, I, I'm, I'm in support of this, but as I think the reason that Commissioner Strickland brought it up was about the cost to us. To, to say that we don't have any skin in the game is not accurate. If they're started, if they're going to use the plan that was done in 2012 well, as a basis for what they're going to be doing, uh, I'll, I'll grant you that. I'll grant you. So that. that's that will be my concern, especially not knowing what that cost is. If we're talking about a thousand dollars, that's one thing. But if you're talking about thirty thousand, that's something else. Well, it, it, I'm <coughs> fairly confident. I came to you about four years ago with this same idea. Uh, I don't know who was on the commission at the time, and I, at the time I think it was $40,000, and we had about half of that already committed. I'm confident that we can get at least half of it. I would think the most we'd be asking for from the county would, and, and again, I can't guarantee this, would probably be from five to, to $15,000. And, and, and Mr. Mr. Slate, mm -hmm. I, I, I'll admit I'm a little ignorant on some of this stuff and I'm probably a little ignorant on a lot of stuff, but let me just say this. What, what's the difference between a trail, if you will, and a sidewalk? You said it could probably be a, a, a trail from the college to downtown Brunswick. Uh -huh. Well, there's already sidewalks all the way from the college to downtown Brunswick. So what, what's... I'm not sure of that. I yes, think sir, if you go down 341... Uh, on the left-hand side, I mm -hmm. think there's sidewalks all along that area, if I'm not I mistaken. I think I'm thinking along MLK and in some of those sections. Yes, uh, sir. Again, I'll, I'll, again, I can show you trails, and I showed you uh, some of what they call the Swamp Rabbit Trail that goes from Greenville, South Carolina, to Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. It goes through Greenville, and it, it's a beautiful trail. It has rest stations. It has uh, a lot of facilities that a normal sidewalk doesn't have. It's wider, for one thing. All right, sir. Well, Mr. Slade, I've known you since the 80s, you know, mm -hmm. and I have a lot of respect for you. Thank you. Here's my problem. As I'm sure you're aware, our planning and zoning department is not exactly flush with personnel right now. 
right. or having issues just filling in slots. So even asking us to approve independent groups working with our planning and zoning is going to put a strain on us and put a strain on the county and the community. Right. Um, we're facing financial shortages in terms of paying our first responders, uh, especially now with the state of Georgia with their 10% across the board pay raises and everything 20. else. 20. Oh, thank you. So we, we, we've already got a lot of financial heartache and weeping and gnashing of teeth coming at us. And although I understand you're very passionate about this, these plans, um, I, I just at this point cannot support putting out county resources for for something like this because we might court, kind of sort of might want to do it in the future. It's, it's just something that if, if, if you were talking about infrastructure that we had to have, I would be a lot more supportive. But these are are nice things to have that we don't necessarily have to have. I'd rather have well-paid first responders before I have a path system all around Glen County, Georgia. And so I, I'm, I'm very hesitant, gentlemen, to ask for this, and, and uh, I was glad you pulled it, Commissioner Strickland, because I didn't know if this was going to cost us money or not. But typically what I'm finding out is there's always somebody coming back asking for money mm -hmm. to finance it or support it, you know, once, once we, we take this first step. Well, you know. I don't I don't respond that they're finding the money in McIntosh, Camden, um, Bryant County. Uh, they're all tying these trail plans into this coastal Georgia Greenway. It will bring significant economic development, and this is backed by the Economic Development Authority and the Chamber of Commerce, and frankly, I, I think that a lot of people, they feel that this is a quality of life issue. Uh, they feel like it's, it's, it's about health. It's about a lot of things other than just being frivolous, but everybody's entitled to their opinion. Basically, what you're asking is for uh, a request for the, pound, for the PATH Foundation to come in and give us a proposal. Yeah, it's about it. Zero money. That's it. Zero money. That's it. And then we can make a decision based on their proposal exactly. whether this thing has economic benefit or is pie in the sky. Exactly. Well, it, it, it gets back to the fact that, that Commissioner Stambaugh just pointed out, too. Right now, I'm not sure we have the staff to facilitate this in a manner that it needs to be carried forward. If the commission wants to approve this, then... <clears throat> I would suggest that we wait till a later date for them to start this study that uh, we have the staff on board that can do it the right way. I agree with Commissioner Stambaugh right now. I couldn't support this with the staff that we have. They're already uh, burdened enough with just carrying on their the daily business. What, could, could what you? is your proposed time frame? For the path, folks. We have no specific time frame. I mean, we can. We what can, does it typically take once you pick up the phone and say, I, Well, the one they're doing on St. Simon, of course, they're taking the existing study, will be, be ready for public meetings probably in June, somewhere around there. So I would say if, they, if you gave them, the, I don't know what their schedule is, they're working with a number of communities around the state. But I would say that we'd be talking about them having a proposal for you within three to three to Three months, probably. And, and what level of burden would this put on our, our planning staff? Not a lot that I know of. I mean, uh, uh, frankly, in, when we did the original one, as I recall, we worked mainly with the county engineer, Ray Richard, back in, I think it was in 2005 or maybe earlier. So the planning department, um, I mean, obviously we want to bring them in the loop. But, I mean, the, the, the on-the-ground work is done by the PATH Foundation and their, their staff and, and the people they work with. And, and tell me how this interfaces with the Coastal Greenway uh, project that you, you, you alluded to that's the next item on the agenda. Can we have one without the other? Or, uh? Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but I think it just makes sense. Uh, and, you know, as, as Commissioner Browning knows, I, I got involved in this back in October. <coughs> Uh, when I, I just felt that I'm, I'm a big believer in PATH. I've seen what they've done for St. Simons. I mean, the, 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 the visitor surveys that we do about people who love the trails and, and, the, and other people. And so I said, well, tell me about the, the Rails to Trails project. And I found out that, you know, it was going to go over the Altamaha River. And I don't think that's feasible. So what I've done is I've talked to the Coastal Georgia Greenway and the Rails to Trails project, and they're going to combine forces. So the trail will come down through Riceboro, 
come into Darien across the, new, the newly constructed bridge that's scheduled to be built over the Altamaha River and will come down 17 past Hoffwell Broadwell, past Altama, and will come through and will go over the Sydney Lanier Bridge and then reconnect with the Rails to Trails project at just south of Exit 29. I think it will, unlike the original Rails to Trail out you know, almost the Thalman, this will bring people right into the heart of our community. And the, the, the I mean, I have figures that I brought to the work session about what the average uh, long distance cyclist does in terms of bed and breakfast stays, motels, lodging, uh, food, beverage, etc. So I just think it'll be a great, uh, I, and, and frankly, by having a trail plan for Glenn County, we can complement what is done because when we get them here, we'd like to have them come into downtown Brunswick. And, I, you know, Brunswick, the city is already building a trail out to the waterfront park, and PATH has, a, has a, a, a rough idea of how we might connect Mary Ross Park with, with Liberty Ship Park. And, again, this is all just in the pie-in-the-sky stage right now. You never know until you get down on the ground, talk to the property owners along the, the way, and, and find out what's really feasible. So, theoretically, we could have a, a, a master plan that interconnects all of this. Exactly. Yeah. Complements the, right. the Greenway. Right. As, as they're doing, by the way, in Savannah, they're going out the, the old Ogeechee Canal there in Savannah. They're doing it in Riceboro. Uh, Camden is now connecting, will connect the ultimate trail with, uh, with St. Mary's, with a trail that goes along Highway 40. Lots, lots going on. We're the only county along the coast or municipality that has not endorse the uh, the coastal Georgia Greenway. So I hope at least you'll do that tonight. Uh, hey, uh, ben, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we're, we're talking about item uh, 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And before I say a whole lot about it, I'm going I'm to jump down to item 13, and I'm going ahead and tell you that uh, I'm going to support item 13. Okay. Before I talk about twelve, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you kind of know what's coming. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, but 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 I'm on board with item thirteen. Okay. But that being said, um, I don't know exactly when it was, but almost exactly four years ago, you invited me to come over, and we sat in your office, and you talked about you know the trail plan for St. Simons, and mm -hmm. at that time, you all were looking to run the trail up uh, East Beach Causeway uh, Sea Island Causeway rather oh, if you right. remember that yes remember what was going on at that Correct. time yes. and um, part of that discussion was you know you got you guys wanted to and gals wanted some buy-in from the county and um, and so you were asking for my support and I'm sure you're probably talking to other commissioners at the right. time and I said well Mr. Slade, I said, I I could sure use a bunch of sidewalks out in District 1. And, you know, if you'll help me get some sidewalks out there, I'll help you do what I can over here. And um, in those four years since, <clears throat> I've been able to talk this board into putting sidewalks right. out to two schools that the school board went went out and put in out in the outer part of the county. Right. Um, Sidewalk should have been put in a long time ago, but these are sidewalks, and um, but it, it 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 it's taken four years to get those sidewalks because we didn't have the money, yeah. and um, they scrounged it up. I stayed on I stayed on them about those two sidewalks like you stayed on us about all this other stuff going on, mm -hmm. and um, I'm seeing it from the inside, and we just don't have the money. And um, I f understand the school board is looking at putting a school even further out off of off of the um, parkway on the other side of 99. They have a site they're looking up at up there. And one of the first things all those parents are going to want are sidewalks put in. And when the school board puts in the school, they don't put in sidewalks. The parents look for the board of commissioners to put sidewalks in. And I hate to think it's going to take some commission another four years to have sidewalks put in sometime after school's built. But talking about quality of life, that's a big item. A sidewalk to a school is a big item. Yeah. And sure. uh, we, 
we could put in a lot more sidewalks. Uh, there are Buck Swamp Road. Those folks out there would, I get calls, they want sidewalks put in. Uh, Manual Farm, Manual Church. Uh, old Jessup Road, which is not in my district, but the old Jess Jessup Road. Anytime I drive down it, I see people walking up and down that side of that road, and they have very little places to walk. They'd love to have sidewalks put in. And the sidewalk that I see more often than not that we're shut almost or almost completing five years, going on five years into my term, which is on 341, a lot of people are using that sidewalk, and, and they appreciate it. And I've got a lot of calls that uh, that's a good thing going in. So uh, I would love to see all the other communities have sidewalks. It's, it's not going to happen, and I can tell you why it's not going to happen. We don't have the money. Uh, if 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 we were to do a good job on this loss, the money just was just started being collected this week. Uh, and if we decided to do another loss in three and a half years and could put sidewalks on it, we could we could see some big gains in putting sidewalks in neighborhoods where we. Uh, really have been needing them for a long time. Uh, problem I see with spending time with the path study, which I think at a better time is not a bad, you know would not be a bad thing, but it is going to impact on the staff who we have been catching it. We have caught mortal, you know what, about having an understaffed community development staff, and I am not going to put any more work on them. And the other thing is, um, when that study comes back, there's going to be a uh, cost uh, portion to it, and uh, we're going to have to decide. We're going to be asked, you know, let's, let's move forward with some of it, if not all of it. And unless we, uh, this commission wants to put some more sidewalks in some neighborhoods, I'm just going to be hard to get along with when it comes to putting trails in. Which, which well, uh, I'll close with this, and I won't take up any more of your time. Uh, you have money in the current splost. I think it would be very beneficial to have input from the PATH Foundation as to how to economically spend that money. Frankly, you spent, overspent, the county did on the trail on on upgrading King's Way. The, nobody locally the, from the land trust was involved in that. We can do it a lot better than those highway funds. We can also bring private philanthropic dollars to this effort. It's being done in, in Carrollton and in LaGrange. We have a community foundation here that I think could, could be – could develop interest in these trails because it is a quality of life interest. I realize you have financial and fiscal constraints, and I'm and I'll probably never live to see this trail system completed. I'm, I'm fairly confident of that. Uh, but but I think at least let's have a plan, something that the community is behind, and then let's try to figure out a way to do it. Uh, we raised forty million dollars on St. Simons to buy land and build trails, so. Uh, it something could be done. So I appreciate your time, and I won't take up any more. And one correction, Mr. Slade. There's in, in Splash 2016. There's no money in there for trails. That money's for sidewalks. Okay. That's one of the problems that we thought that we would have trying to sell this to the voters. Yeah. Is as Commissioner Browning put it, uh, pointed out. Uh -huh. We need sidewalks all over this county, and for us to be foolish enough to try to put money in there for trails was not going to. Yeah, I, I think you're wrong on that, but uh, that's that's your job. I can't the, uh, do it for you. <laughs> let me just say, I, I think I there's mean, lots of people that, and and I think it's semantics about. I see a lot of people riding bicycles on your trails, uh, Commissioner Browning, on your sidewalks out there. They're riding bicycles. Let's make it safe and convenient for them to ride bicycles uh, on trails and on <laughs> sidewalks. That's it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I mean, I just, I, I feel like we'd be extremely short-sighted not to take advantage of the PATH Foundation and what they could bring to the party in the way of information, economic benefit, potential for economic benefit. And, and, and if it's not there, then then we uh, punt and, you know, build sidewalks or whatever. We, we do. But uh, to just not avail ourselves of the opportunity to look at it, I, I just think it's a mistake. Uh, I've, I saw what it did for Columbus. My goodness, it is a different town. 
um, and the other towns I've not seen um, uh, up front and close, but Columbus, it changed Columbus. Uh, it changed that town. And uh, so that's, you know. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I will just say one last little bit on this. Uh, I'm not against su support of this. My uh, issue is uh, with the statement of skin in the game. I feel like if the PATH Foundation is saying we don't have skin in the game, that's, that's not accurate. We do. And that's what I have an issue with. I'm in full support of trying to work with them um, with this and the other item 13. But um, how we do that, um, uh, I think if, if we've already have a study, then if they're going to update it, then fine. That's a partnership. We've already done it. We spent money on that. Then you all go ahead and update it, and then let's move on from there. Well, I, th I think what they're asking, Commissioner Booker, is just a request to proceed to show us what 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 is feasible. I, I don't think they're asking for a dime. At no, this, that's not point. what I think Ben just said. It's going to be asked of us on this study at some point in time. It, it, we can make a decision one way or another. We do not have to spend the money. We can say, look, this is a beautiful document you've produced here. Thank you very much. We don't have the money. We're going to build sidewalks and move on. But if the economic benefit is so demonstrative that, I mean, you'd have to be brain dead to turn it down, then I think we got to d decide whether we want to spend some money to make some money. I mean, I think that's kind of what it's all about. Anyway. I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think, uh, you know, what I'm hearing is it's not going to cost us any money to at least get the ball rolling. And, and if time comes where there's a big ask of a lot of money and we don't have it with that time, we can say no. But uh, I think it would be short-sighted not to at least move forward. So with that being said, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve submitting a request to the PATH Foundation for a proposal to prepare a master trail plan study for the mainland. Okay, we have a motion. I second. We have a motion and a second. Can I second, Squire? All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the uh, submitting a request to the PATH Foundation, uh, any discussion, any further discussion, uh, signify by raising your right hand. Uh, that's two. All right, all those opposed, uh, same sign. All right, that's uh, four, and that is uh, defeated. Item 13, approve adopting a resolution endorsing the recommendations of the House and Senate Joint Coastal Greenway Study Committee and urging Governor Nathan Deal, Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, and Speaker David Ralston to support an appropriation of at least $1 million or more in the next state budget to initiate the Greenway's planning and construction under the coordination of the Coastal Regional Commission. Uh, that one's mine, too. Uh, and, and the reason I pull this is, as I pointed out, I believe, in the work session where Mr. Slade once again brought this before the Board of Commissioners, uh, this commission was reluctant and did not uh, adopt a resolution some time ago uh, supporting this. And our reasoning for supporting for not supporting it at the time is the same reason that I have some reluctance now not to support it is that we were afraid that this was going to get dumped on the county. Now, I understand that all of the other coastal counties and cities have passed resolutions supporting this, and I certainly applaud their efforts to, to that degree. But once again, I wonder... In the final analysis of this, who, who's going to wind up paying for this? I understand the economic benefits that it can provide to the county, and, and I also realize that once it's put in, that just like so many other things here in Glen County, uh, Glen County is going to wind up for the maintenance of it. Uh, you know, we right now, uh, we uh, with a contract through the state, we do the mowing of all the state right-of-ways and, and pick up the litter on all the state highways. And, and even though they pay us, it's a very small percentage of what we actually put out as far as uh, money to provide that service. So once again, I'm just worried that once this thing 
is completed, then Glen County once again is going to have to have some type of agreement and, and get the short end of the stick when it comes to uh, working with the state of Georgia, which is not unusual in this day of time when you work with the state to uh, get this. And, and I would have this question, and maybe somebody can answer it. Did, in fact, the, the state provide a million dollars in this year's budget for this project? They did no, not. They did provide 100000 100000 So uh, are they looking, is that what they're going to do? They're going to put $100,000 in it over a 10-year period to get to this $1, or $1 million dollar uh, the request Mark. was for a, a million dollars a year for 10 years. Now, they did 100000 the last legislature, then they've done 100000 this legislature session. The 100000 before was used in McIntosh and in the city of Brunswick, and I think some of it was used by Jekyll Island to extend some of their trail out to their welcome center. But that was it's only $100,000, but we've asked for a good bit more. And again, it's all about leadership. I, I just still, uh, even now, I understand what the economic benefits, but I just look down the road and see potentially what this is going to wind up costing Glen County. So. Well, I, I'm just, I checked. I didn't see where the state of Georgia needed our approval to build a thing. When they're putting the roundabout on Spur 99, they came and told us what they were doing, not ask us for our support or our uh, permission. Of course, we're being asked to put money in this. Why do you think they want us to support it? If the state of Georgia wanted to put this pathway in, build it, maintain it, take care of it for now and for all, ever more, they wouldn't even be talking to us. They'd run it down 17, 341, any place on the state road they wanted to put it, gentlemen. You vote for this, what you're voting for is an unknown. My problem with this is how much money is it going to cost to Glen County taxpayers, and nobody will tell me. And all I see is numbers like $5.5 million in revenues. Where, where's that going to come from? Now, you tell me the people on St. Simons come to St. Simons and use the bike paths, which is what we were told. I agree 100 percent. I do not see anybody peddling to Sterling from the King of Trends. <laughs> to check out the Parker's fried food buffet up there. I'm sorry, I, and, and I'm not trying to be, <laughs> yes, I'm just saying, we get a presentation of two metropolitan cities connected by 30 or 40 miles of bike path, and we see how that is economically feasible for those cities. What is it, six, seven million total population of those two places? We have 80,000 people in this community. We get about 3.2 million tourists a year. I do not see tourists coming to Glen County to ride on the pathway through Glen County. You tell me you want to put more back bike paths on St. Simons? I got you. People come there. They come to vacation there. And they use the bike paths there. They use them on Jekyll. But we're being asked to vote to spend taxpayer dollars, and the state of Georgia is not going to tell us how much it's going to cost us until it's all said and done. Then they're going to come back to us. And if that, if I'm wrong, why is anybody telling me about a $5.5 million big-time benefit we're going to get? Because you got to spend money to make money, Commissioner. Well, you're telling me you think I'm going to make 5.5, but you're not telling me up front how much it's going to cost me to make it. And I, I, I'm like you, Commissioner Strickland. I, I think we're going to spend a whole lot of money over the next 10 or 15 years mowing because, like you said, they don't even pay us enough to mow and pick up the trash on their roads now. They're not going to pay us enough to maintain this thing. Well, well I, sure am, I, I, just, <laughs> I, I sure am glad we have these roads now that we can maintain the right-of-ways on because I enjoy driving my car from point A to point B, and I'd hate to walk. And, and, well, and for, furthermore, if I could just uh, speak on, on the other side, uh, since it's all been negative thus far, uh, you know, I, 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 I you know, it's a, it's a coastal Georgia greenway project. I mean, are we going to be the only county on coast, coastal Georgia that does not support this project? I mean, I think that's an embarrassment in, in Glenn County, that's one of the wealthiest counties in the state. Now, look, we may have to mow the mow the grass. But it also comes down to a quality of life issue for those that don't live on St. Simons, that do like to cycle, that don't want to cycle in the middle of 17 with cars going 65 miles an hour. 
uh, it becomes quality of life, becomes safety, and it becomes, are we going to be the only ones that don't join in this plan to connect the entire coast to Georgia? I, I mean, that, that to me would be an embarrassment if we don't. Let me just say one last thing, and then I'll shut it down. But, uh, you know, it seems like the state of Georgia is really pushing this thing. If, if they had requested a million dollars and, and the uh, General Assembly and the, and the Senate gave them $100,000. So it doesn't seem like, that, you know, there's a, there's a big push to try to move this thing forward with any, you know, uh, rapid speed or anything else. So I'm just not sure how, how much the state of Georgia is really into this thing. Anyway, having said that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm through. Um, let me add, I'm in um, total support of this. Um, as I said, my issue with the previous item was um, them, the statement of us not having skin in the game. I think we already do uh, on the study. But I, I do believe that this will help my district in particular. Uh, I think we need more pathways. I think we have, uh, there are, uh, we have a waterfront. We have businesses down there that this will help out. So we will get part of that, that money that they're talking about. Um, and my hope is that the state um, will ante up and do their part. But um, the, um, as um, Slate talked about leadership, uh, well, I, most of the leadership up there now, I didn't vote for. I'm hoping that we change that and we get the people in there that will support it. If, if, if the state doesn't ante up, it ain't going to get done. Okay, uh, any, more, any further discussion on this? Um, all right, I'll entertain a, a motion um, for item 13. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve uh, adopting a resolution endorsing the recommendations of the House and Senate uh, to support an appropriation of at least a million dollars, at, at, at least a million dollars. So. A portion of, of course, but uh, I think it's be something good for our county. Yeah, motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. That is four. All those opposed? Two. All right. The motion passed. All right. Um, okay, the next item, I think, is appointments. Uh, number 17, consider the, appointing, consider the appointing one citizen to serve a four-year term on the board of directors of the Glen Brandrick Land Bank. The term begins in the, on the date of the first board meeting. Uh, applications received from uh, Bob Blackwell and Jay Kaufman. Uh, I'll entertain a nomination. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Jay Kaufman. We have a nomination for Jay Kaufman. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Bob Blackwell. Have a nomination for Bob Blackwell. Uh, we'll, uh, those are the only two that applied. We'll vote on the nominations in the order that they were made. All those in favor of Jay Kaufman, please signify by raising your right hand. That is two. <clears throat> All those in favor of Bob Blackwell, signify by raising your right hand. Peter, what did you do? I, I, I didn't vote. I don't know enough. Okay. I apologize. All right. You obtained it from the vote. <laughs> Flip a coin. I, mean, I apologize. I just, uh, <laughs> okay. if I don't know, I'm not going to say fine. I know. That, that's fine. I just didn't. I was looking. What, I, what know, do we got? Two to four? Uh, two to three? Three. Uh, that's not a majority. Uh, pass, commissioners. So. We need at least four votes to pass an item. Oh, my gosh. I, 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 apo I apologize. <clears throat> do we uh, re-vote? Sure. You can. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we'll take another vote. All those in favor of Jay Kaufman, please signify by raising your right hand. That is two. All those in favor of Bob Blackwell, please signify by raising your right hand. That is four. That is a majority. And uh, Mr. Blackwell will serve, and thank you for volunteering, both of those people. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to say um, Jay Kaufman's a fine individual. Yes, yeah. I, I think everybody has a lot of respect for him. But Mr. Blackwell's resume is very impressive. 
So, but I don't want Jay to feel like uh, the community doesn't appreciate who he is or the commissioner. Well, no, certainly appreciate both guy. of them volunteering for this. Um, I don't think the pay is very good. <laughs> so, <clears throat> all right. Thank you, Jr., for those, those comments. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, all right, general business, uh, item number 18, uh, consider adopting an amendment to section 211-9 of the Glenn County Code of Ordinances to limit parking in Frederica Park to users of the park. Uh, Commissioner Murphy. Yes, sir, I'd like to defer to my great good friend, Mr. Dave Austin, the Director of Public Works, to uh, maybe fill us in on some of the details. What are you trying to get a shirt like Commissioner Browning by, you know, I, sugar I, from I, I never got a shirt. I didn't either. I, I That's appreciate my point. one. You know. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mr. Yeah, Chairman, Dr. Commissioners. Uh, we've received some complaints about uh, contractors parking in the park up there off of Lawrence Federica Park, and uh, they park there all day long, and so park visitors uh, cannot park in the park. And so I brought this up to the chief, and the uh, chief said, well, I can enforce it if you we put a sign up there that says parking for park visitors only. Seems to make a lot of sense. And so uh, we talked to Dr. Murphy, and, uh, and that's why this action is before you for approval. So if I could uh, uh, tag team on, uh, this is a nice park uh, up, up Lawrence Road, and uh, I believe it was donated, the land was donated by the land trust, is that right? And the uh, construction, I believe. For, for, uh, construction, so it was a, it was a, a fully funded uh, effort, and it's got a beautiful soccer field. Uh, it's got a, a nice dog park all fenced in. And there's one other thing there, Dave, high on the right. I just can't remember. But be that as it may, it's become a rideshare park uh, where construction workers have taken up the first 30 or so spaces in the park. Uh, and, I, and I understand... Uh, you know why this is done it's done for convenience and also to not have construction workers vehicles uh, in the area where they're actually doing the construction but my concern after hearing for some from some citizens and, and, and one citizen complained that when he pulled his uh, truck in there to get out on his bike he has to park in the back and I'm thinking what the heck you're riding your bike what difference does it make if you drive 200 yards more uh, so uh, that didn't uh, di didn't sway me much but but then I heard from others uh, and, and it makes sense. Look, during the school year, uh, it's not such a big issue. But now school's almost ready to uh, be released, and, 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 and moms and kids are going to go there to get in the park. And if, if 30 of the prime places are taken uh, by people who aren't even utilizing the park, it seems to be a, a, a misuse uh, and a dysfunctional use of land that was donated for a specific purpose. That's why I asked Dave to get involved along with Chief Doring. Commissioner, just so I've got this, the island commissioner is asking if we put more vehicles on the roads <laughs> on state side. <laughs> or am I misinterpreting that? This is just a specific area way up north where I don't, where I don't live. <laughs> no, you, but, but you understand what I'm saying. Uh, there, uh, you know, uh, the vehicles can be parked uh, where the construction is being done, and I just, uh, uh, there's no ride uh, sharing sign there, and uh, I think we need to use a park for a park. It was donated for a park and built as a park. I guess I got one quick question. Dave, this park, it does belong to Glen County. Correct. And we maintain it and everything? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. And if you haven't been there, they do a bang-up job maintaining it. It's a, it's a beautiful soccer field and, and, and nice little dog, dog walk area. It's, it's really a nice, a nice addition to the north end. Yeah, uh, with the person patrolling the parking lot, looking for a ride share. Uh, if 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 you have a policeman over there, how's he going to know that that car or vehicle is a ride share, as Commissioner Murphy described them, or if, or, or if the person's out in the park there someplace? How are they going to know? I plead a fifth on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Now look, I'm, we wouldn't I'm for, know. We would have to. It's not. It would be effectively an honor system, unless an officer sees it. We can't assume that someone's not in the park unless we have some yeah. objective way of looking yeah. at it. Typically, these things are based on an honor system. Unless we get a complaint, we can run a tag, try to find somebody's not there, 
and go from there with it. But it does take some work. Yeah, it yeah. takes some work. <clears throat> I'm for putting up a sign or whatever, you know, we can do to try to. I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just, I was sitting here thinking, if I was a patrolman and pulled in that parking lot and saw a bunch of vehicles in there and a lot of. You can't. I mean, how much? You have to see, and, and if it got a real problem, if it doesn't solve the problem, we can do a surveillance on it, watch in the morning hours mm -hmm. when they typically come for construction, yeah. watch them get in, then we can stop them and take it from yeah, there. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe have them go out, you know, during early morning starting to work hours and kind of see who's pulling in and if they're getting out of the vehicle, jumping in another vehicle and taking off. I think, you, I think you just solved the problem yeah. right there. If, if, they're, to make if, they, if they're not lacing up their soccer cleats and getting the ball out of the back yeah. or, or a bike. Yeah. If it's a you know. cement truck, it's probably a little yeah. suspect. You gonna make the motion? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, th thank you for the discussion. I would like to make a motion to uh, adopt the uh, uh, amendment section two eleven nine of the Glen County Code to limit parking in Frederica Park to users of the park only. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, I just had one concerning it. We probably can't deal with it here, but I mean, these are guys who are working and a part of the economic uh, system. Um, do, is there anywhere that we might be able to accommodate, you know, this, this, uh, uh, these guys or other folk who may um, carpool to help? Because parking and traffic are issues on St. Simons. Yes, I agree. This is on the north end, though. This is, uh, this is uh, past the traffic circle at Frederica and Lawrence. And, and I believe it, it deals with the far north end, and okay. that's where a lot of, you know, nice construction is being done. And I'm, believe me, I am not anti-construction. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-soccer moms and soccer kids <laughs> having a space to me, park. Me <laughs> and my suggestion is is that, that, that the workers park where the work is being done. And I think that there, there may be a, a push by the HOAs to suggest that the higher volume goes, so I don't know this for a fact, goes somewhere else. And I'm just objecting to where that somewhere else is right now. Yeah, because basically if they're driving all that way, they've already clogged up the roads to get there. Yeah. They're already past most of the, of the choke yeah, points. Yeah, they could the shopping centers yeah. and park for that yeah. fact, matter of that mm -hmm. fact. You know? yeah. Okay, any further discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of approval of uh, adopting the amendment, uh, signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. Thank you. Item number 19, approve the intergovernmental agreement between Glenn County and the Georgia Department of Natural Resources <coughs> to allocate an amount not to exceed $9,000 from the county manager's, manager's contingency fund to make repairs to the north dock at the St. Simons Island Marina. Commissioner Murphy. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, I pulled this uh, only for the purpose of enlightenment and discussion. I am fully on board with approving the intergovernmental agreement uh, and to allocate uh, an amount uh, from the county coffers, which we've heard are, are very uh, limited at present time, uh, up to $9,000 to make repairs to the St. Simons Island Marina. The issue that I have, uh, if I, and, and, it, and it's a, it's a, uh, may take a minute or two, so bear with me. Uh, so, so once Hurricane uh, Matthew came, uh, shortly thereafter, uh, Commissioner Brunson and myself were asked to go down uh, to the what's called the St. Simons Boating and Fishing Club uh, to to survey the damage and 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 come to understand that our docks had been damaged. And we need to look into repairing them. And my first question is, what do you mean our docks? Uh, you know, I always, uh, whenever I went down there, I'd saw, I saw the sign club up uh, in their sign. And I figured since I wasn't a member of the club, I wasn't going to go on the premises. So I didn't. Well, come to find out, uh, in 1949, a charter uh, was issued to the St. Simon's Boating and Fishing Club. Uh, for, and a lease uh, uh, was, was written subsequent to that. Uh, and the, the lease was last signed in uh, 2004, and the lease is, uh, is for a dollar a year uh, with 5% uh, increases on an annual basis. Uh, and I've been told uh, that lease uh, is in arrears for about seven or eight years. Uh, but I did, uh, I did re read the lease um, on this club, 
that in a county of 85,000 people, there's 400 members of this club, and if anyone was to wander down to uh, Gascoigne Bluff, you'll see one of the <laughs> finest areas in the entire county for launching a boat. And as, as many people know, we have one public launch uh, ramp in all of uh, St. Simons Island, and that's up by Village Creek off South Harrington, and it's a slip, slip and slide uh, made of uh, what looks like pavers that, that really can only be uh, accessed at high tide. So it's a challenge. So uh, to go through the lease, uh, and, and, and these are the issues that, uh, that, that I have concerns with on the lease. Uh, it, it stipulates that, one, improvements must be approved by the county and must be ADA compliant. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not positive that they are ADA compliant. Uh, they must have liability insurance in the amount of $1 million, and they must have casualty insurance in an amount uh, to equal the replacement costs. And I do know that that has not been done, and that's why they've come to the county to ask us to pay for the replacement costs. Uh, at least get them started. That, that was, uh, uh, I, I misspoke. They did not come to us asking for replacement costs. They came to us to help facilitate starter costs. And, and, and again, I'm fully on board with that. Uh, additionally, there's a provision in the lease to say uh, that an annual audit uh, must be done and must be furnished to the county. And I'm certain that hasn't been done, and I, I believe that that's partly their problem and partly the county's problem. We've been inattentive to this matter. But also, in, in, the, in, the, in the end stipulations, it's for the benefit of all members of the public uh, without uh, discrimination. And if I can read uh, 15B, Lessees shall offer boat launching, boat retrieval, temporary docking to all members of the public without uh, discrimination. And uh, as well, the premises shall be used and operated by lessee as a public dock for the benefit of the public general, generally. Uh, well, <clears throat> since I brought this up at the work session, I've, I've been called and stopped uh, in my travels by people of the public, and, and even one, or one member of, of the club who say they, they have had difficulties uh, getting uh, the service that they believe they're entitled to as a member of the public. So, um, as I said, um, they have three acres of prime real estate in Gascoigne Park. Uh, I'm concerned uh, about the appearance of those three acres. Uh, it's become a parking lot for rusted out boat trailers. And I went over there one afternoon last week with my dog to walk around. There's at least 20 trailers parked in a haphazard fashion. Many of these have rusted out. Uh, many of these have no tags or licenses. And, and several of them have weeds of at least six or eight years duration cr crawling up through them. So uh, in some, I think we can do better. Uh, I'm here to support. Uh, this club, but I think to call it a club probably uh, is is not appropriate. I think it, it ought to be a, a, a public facility and so designated. Um, so that's my long-winded way of saying that uh, I'm all in favor of signing the intergovernmental agreement and, and, and allocate funds not to exceed $9,000. Thank you. Uh, uh, it, let me... Go ahead. Alan, go ahead. Yeah, my, my concern even in the work session, was similar to Commissioner Murphy's. Um, and I know that uh, members of my district uh, probably thought it was a private club and not open to the public. Um, and I don't know how I can support this without, um, because I thought they were going to be here presenting how they were going to market to the public in general. Um, and change their strategy for letting the public know. Um, but I guess nobody's here to represent them. Um, I just have a lot of issues with this, um, thus moving forward with us. I know the repairs need to be made, but um, if the public is, doesn't think that you can use it now, I mean, repairing it is only going to be for the small group of people who use it. Right well, well uh, you know, I, 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 you and I are on the same page, obviously. Uh, but uh, unless we get them what, what's going to seemingly be about $39,000, 30 of it from the, the DN, state DNR and, and up to nine of it, for, unless we do that, there will be no there there. And they have to get this started 
But, but I honestly believe, having met with them at least three, maybe four times now, I, I think they're on notice that they need to start complying with, with what you and I think are the, the right things to do for the members of our public. And, 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 and just to even, even go further than that, uh, we talked about this in the work session, and, and I think hopefully they understood what this commission wants. And I think that's something we can monitor. We have a lease with them. And if they don't fulfill the requirements of that lease, then all we got to do is just revoke the lease, which they haven't paid anyway. So we need that 8 or $9 they haven't paid for the last few years. We can certainly put that in the budget. But anyway, I think this is something we can do, and I agree with you completely. I'm not sure how we can go about getting these trailers removed. I'm not sure if that's something that we need to put on their shoulders to make them do, or if it's something that we need the county to take the responsibility since it belongs to us. If we go over there and put tags on them trailers and say, you've got X number of days to move this trailer, or it will be towed at the owner's expense, and you can pick it up wherever, that may be one answer to getting rid of these trailers over there. And I think we can do that with the police department. Well, I, 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 they've already uh, contacted me uh, and, and suggest that they're uh, on the way to resolving this issue, and uh, I, I will follow up with it. And if they, and if they don't comply, that, that, that would be one of the first items of concern that I would suggest to you all, maybe we ought to go down a different path rather than renewing this dollar lease with 5% incremental uh, increases. Maybe we ought to go to a different path, you know, an RFP, get a, get a marina group in there to really manage this thing and maybe make some money for the county. But, but I, to me, that's the nuclear option. I, 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 would, I would like to gain... Uh, their, their, their understanding, support, and cooperation just because it's the right thing to do. Commissioner, yeah, I've, I've, uh, yeah, from, the work, from, from the work session when the uh, group came before us and even in the work session when I listened to Commissioner Murphy and some of the concerns he had at that time, um, it, you know, we realized there's some problems over there. But tonight, listening to Commissioner Murphy, he's identified... A number of problems, and uh, he understands what the issues are with the uh, St. Simons Island Boating Club and the perception from the public, uh, some of the public has with it, and and uh, issues that that so-called club was not even, or apparently not concerned about, but again, what I'm hearing is Commissioner Murphy has got right into the middle of it. Um, you know, he's got a handle on it. Um, I think we should let it, you know, move forward uh, in a direction that sounds like he's charted, uh, see where we go with this, and wait on him to come in here at some date in the future, and he's going to say, hey, it's working, or, fellas, I need y'all to work with me and make some changes over there. And yeah, I'm, you're, I'm, you're, I'm you're, you're very there. kind to say that, and I, will, I promise you I will do that. Yeah. I, I think yeah. this group has gotten the message uh, from, from what, whatever it's worth. Uh, I, I understand that they've got a whole brand new sign that the top of the sign says public welcome and it they've changed the name of the club to the marina uh, on the sign I've not seen it but I I, I believe the people huh? yes and, and I, I believe the people that, that that they want to they want to do what's right I think and I think they've already started an initiative regarding the trailers I mean the trailers aren't their fault. My goodness, if there had been cars over there, they, we'd have had them towed. And I, I, I think that that behooves us to, 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 I mean, the trailers, that, that's ridiculous. There's somebody who doesn't, can't park their trailer in, in the Island Club or Hamilton Landing or wherever, so they're going to go park it out there on public, on public land and leave, it and leave it there for decades. Well, that, well that's it. But it's, but it's also in their bylaws that they have, you know, the, the, the maximum I think they, they sent to me was, was a 14-day uh, rest period for the trailer. Look, they've got three of the nicest acres on St. Simon's Island with one of the finest access to the Frederica River plus the Garden Club right next door so everybody gets to see the oak trees and the avenue of oaks that Dave we're going to have to protect in a little bit better fashion. But, uh, you know, 
they, they, they get it. Uh, maybe some people are just using it as a parking lot, but guess what? That's coming to an end. Commissioner Murphy, I think you have their attention. Undivided, Sir, thank you. Undivided attention. Well, I appreciate that. That's very kind. I would like to make a motion that we uh, not only approve the intergovernmental agreement between Glynn County and the Georgia DNR to allocate uh, and, and also to allocate an amount uh, from the county not to exceed $9,000 from the contingency fund to help them repair the North Dock at the St. Simons Marina. Thank you. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor of approval of the motion uh, signify by raising your right hand. All right. Thank you very much. Squire, we have anything for executive session? All right. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, you got it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>